I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is the trial lawyer that went up against Apple and won, Steve Bauer. He is the co-chair of the patent law group at Proskauer Rose, and he represented mobile media ideas in a recent patent infringement suit against Apple. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So, Steve, before we get to the verdict in this case, can you give us a little background? Tell us a little bit about your client. What kind of a company is Mobile Media Ideas? So, Mobile Media Ideas was a company that was formed to hold some patents that were originally developed by Sony and Nokia relating to the uh, smartphones. And its business is to try to get that technology uh, promulgated more widely and to license it to people using it. According to several reports, uh, Mobile Media holds about a binder full of about 300 patents. So would it be fair to describe the company as a patent troll? It is definitely not a patent troll. That's a term that is, I think, grossly misused by many, many people. Some people think that anyone that sues someone uh, that isn't actually using that technology currently fits within that definition. But that would pick up people like AT&T and IBM and Apple themselves, who go out and get patents and uh, buy patents from other people, for example, and try to license them. I think the common term for trolls nowadays is someone who takes a patent that pretty much everyone knows is either invalid or just crazy and tries to license it for some value way beyond what its net worth is. So one way people look at it, um, an insurance company can sell you insurance fire insurance and that's okay but when the mobster comes along and is holding the gas can and says if you pay him he'll ensure that your house doesn't burn down that would be a patent troll okay so but was the company mobile media formed though for the specific purpose of licensing and enforcing its patents well i can't get into it's the, 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 what people were thinking when they formed it um, i didn't represent it at that time it was certainly formed to hold these patents from Sony and Nokia and to license them, and that's its business. So in the original case, which was actually filed back in 2010, at Mobile Media alleged that Apple had infringed 16 of its patents, but only three patents actually made it the trial. So which, Steve, which three were they, Steve? Right, so because there were 16 originally, uh, the case was complicated. So we've gone through a lot of uh, procedures along the way Several of those are still live and in the case. They were just bifurcated or separated out for a later trial. We picked three patents to go to trial. It was our choice uh, for the first round. There are going to be other rounds, likely. And the patents that went to trial, one related to a camera phone, uh, the idea of integrating a digital camera in a smartphone. That came out of Nokia back in 1994. Uh, the other two patents were call handling type of patents. One related to the idea that when you get a second call and you push a button on your cell phone and it ignores the call, uh, the idea of how to do that was one of the second patent. And the third patent was uh, the one uh, key idea, using one key to merge or swap calls. That second call that comes in, how do you merge them together or swap them back and forth? And so that was the third patent. And, and at trial, you didn't actually have to prove that Apple's infringement here was willful or deliberate, did you? We did not allege that the infringement was willful. That's right. And we just had to show that they were using this technology. So the trial took for uh, about a week, and after uh, four hours of deliberating, the jury actually found that the patents to be valid and that Apple had infringed them. So what kind of an award, though, are you expecting in this case since it has yet been determined? So you know, you, you've made one comment there that the jury was out for only four hours. We think that's pretty compelling evidence of what the jury thought about these patents, that it took them only four hours to do this. We didn't push the damages piece at this point. The judge had bifurcated that issue out, so we haven't yet made our damages case. Uh, all I can say right now is there are a lot, a, a lot of iPhones out there that, are acute, that were found to infringe, a so, lot, but we haven't yet put a money value on those in court. And you, and you can't give us an estimate just yet what you might expect by way of an award. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, that whole part of the case was separated out. I can just tell you there's a lot of iPhones out okay. there. You can do the math. <laughs> well, yes, I have one myself. But uh, when do you expect this part of the trial to go forward? So that's not clear because we still, as I told, said, we have other patents that are still in the case, and the court hasn't scheduled any of those follow-up. Uh, Apple, we have to discuss that with Apple in the court 
what the next schedule is. The only thing we have now is a jury verdict that Apple infringed three patents. So, Steve, in your opinion, what's significant about this verdict? Well, I think a lot of people will say it's one of the first big verdicts in which Apple lost. Apple has been on a, um, uh, a pretty successful run, and people know about its case against Samsung and a few other cases. And um, I think people think that Apple is a pretty innovative company. And, and by the way, we conceded that it's an innovative company at trial. When I said we didn't accuse them of willful infringement. Uh, the way we describe it is Apple's essentially a Ferrari, and they may have the best, fastest, coolest car out there, but when they needed heated seats, they didn't go out and invent the heated seat. And that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. The iPhone's a cool device. I have one, too. But Apple used technology that we said and the jury believed was invented by Nokia and Sony back in the 1990s. And that's pretty significant. Uh, I think people think that's significant. Well, in 2012, a uh, patent jury award soared with uh, seven topping $100 million. And, but according to Bloomberg News, uh, many of those top awards have been thrown out or reduced by judges on appeal or by post-trial motion. So first, Steve, let me ask you, why have we seen so many huge patent awards lately? You're seeing a lot of huge patent awards. I think it shows the value of this technology. Remember, almost all of those awards are being uh, awarded by juries. It's after experts testify for both sides. Uh, the cases in which you're seeing these big awards, the juries, having heard all the evidence, are reaching the conclusion that the technology that was taken is important and valuable. But why have uh, almost half of the top 25 awards been short-lived and that they've been reduced or thrown out by judges? Yeah, so that's the problem with the system right now, and, and I think most people acknowledge that. Uh, the, the district court judges are looking at these awards carefully, but usually defer to the jury. More often than not, the judges defer to the jury. But what you have now is the Court of Appeals in Washington, where all these patent cases are going. Uh, those judges are all patent law experts. And while they give a lot of deference to the jury, they give less deference to the judge and the, and the way the judge interprets the law. And they're looking at these things uh, very carefully, very independently. We say de novo. And uh, they, more than any other appeals court in the country, reverse more of these cases, uh, more cases that come to them. So the Federal Circuit's reversing almost half the cases that come their way from the patent courts. And it, you know, what we like to think about, it's like being ahead 17-0 at the half in a football game. You're feeling pretty good. But if you're ahead 17-0, as some teams know, you can still lose. Yeah, there's always, there can always be a comeback there. But at the Apple case isn't your client's only patent infringement suit. Who else has it pursued in the last year or so? So there's two other cases that are pending right now, one against RIM and one against HTC. And, and, and Steve, before we go, though, I want to ask you a little bit about Proskauer's patent law group. Uh, can you tell us what other successes have you had lately? So our patent group is uh, split between New York and Boston. We've got about 40 people in Boston. Almost all of us are engineers by training. And uh, our clients, about half of them come out of the Boston market. They're technology startups. They're innovative companies. The other half are national companies uh, like, uh, well, that are bigger, more national. Uh, the cases are important. And we've won a bunch of them recently. We recently got a verdict, not a verdict, a decision from a judge in San Francisco. Uh, throwing out a case that was brought. Uh, I was representing a company that's since been acquired by Oracle. Uh, we recently won a case on behalf of America Honda. The case was uh, out in Detroit. And so we've done pretty well on defending some of these cases. Well, yeah, and I want to mention, though, that even though you're joining us today from Chicago, your home office, so to speak, is Boston, correct? My home office is in Boston. I think the firm told me I set the record of partners at the firm being on the road last year. <laughs> patent litigation patent litigation's a national thing. The plaintiffs, the patent owners, get to pick the court, and they have their favorite courts. And so uh, I've put in 25 appearances in the last few years in Texas. I'm here in Chicago today. I had a court hearing today. We're all over the place. Well, safe travel, travels back home, Steve, and thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Again, thank you for inviting me. It was my pleasure. Thank you.
For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.